Seeing old Ning and Bai Shen, who created the fire meteorite to attack, all the people of the ancient Holy Rome Empire became too scared. They thought that their empire was done for, and everyone was looking for the Pope, thinking he could do something in this situation. Suddenly, some people came out of the Holy Church and flew towards that fire meteorite. These people were the Pope and powerful elders of the Holy Church. When citizens saw that the Pope and elders were here, they thought they were safe now and nothing would happen. The Pope of the ancient Rome Vatican is an old man named Gubat. Pope Gubat got very angry when he found out that their Vatican city is under attack. In anger, Pope Gubat shouted, asking who was looking for him and how dare they mess with the Vatican. Are they seeking death? But Pope Gubat's throat got dry when he saw Ning Tairan, the divine level professional from the Shengxia Empire, standing there. Pope Gubat himself is very powerful, but he is nothing in front of Ning Tairan. Ning Tairan was not alone. Pope Gubat got more scared and started trembling in fear when he saw Shengxia's slaughterer God Bai Shen standing beside Ning Tairan. Pope Gubat could not understand why both of them were there. But a thought made him more scared. Did they come here to destroy the Vatican country? Pope's tone immediately changed seeing both of them there. Nervousness was all around his face. He managed to make a smiley face and respectfully greeted and welcomed them to his country. He asked for forgiveness first and said that if the Vatican has offended them in any way, he will surely compensate for it. Gubat is clueless and doesn't know why both of them have come there. On the ground, all the citizens are confused about why the Pope is talking like that. It was a normal reaction after seeing the most powerful person in the Vatican country behaving like that. People now understand that they are all really going to die there. In the sky, angry old Ning asks Pope Gubat to take out a boy named Rutgers right now. Hearing him, the Pope gets confused, thinking how did Rutgers offend someone like old Ning and Bai Shen? But the scared Pope did not dare to ask and immediately orders the elders to go and bring Rutgers there. The elders left to get Rutgers. Pope Gubat cautiously asks Old Ning and Bai Shen what Rutgers has done to offend both of them. He asks because Rutgers is Vulcan Palace's holy son, and the Pope needs to protect Rutgers as much as he can. Old Ning coldly stated that Rutgers didn't offend him. Confused Gubat turns to Bai Shen, and Bai Shen also added that Rutgers didn't offend him either. Hearing that, the Pope gets relieved that Rutgers didn't offend them. But his relief didn't last long as Old Ning's eyes showed killing intent and he mentioned that Rutgers offended his precious granddaughter. Bai Shen also added that Rutgers offended his precious disciple. Gubat got too scared when he heard what Rutgers did. Gubat knows that what Rutgers did is worse than directly offending Old Ning and Bai Shen. Gubat was angry, thinking, that damn Rutgers, what did he do? On the other hand, elders take out Rutgers, who is weak at the moment and is barely able to walk by himself. Seeing Rutgers like that, Old Ning asks the Pope if he is the descendant of Vulcan. Rutgers also gets scared when he sees the fire meteor flying around. Suddenly, a yellow light falls on Rutgers, and he starts to fly towards it. It was the Pope who used his power to summon Rutgers there. He grabbed Rutgers' hand and said, This is really Rutgers, the Holy Son. The reason why he is like that is because he accidentally died two days ago and has just been resurrected. Rutgers was trembling in fear seeing Old Ning and Bai Shen there. When Old Ning saw Rutgers, he used his spiritual pressure on Rutgers' mind and said, So it was you who used the dungeon tracking scroll to chase after Lin Moyu, a student of my Shenxia Academy. And it was also you who called my granddaughter a two. Because Old Ning used spiritual pressure on Rutgers, he was unable to lie and hide his emotions. Rutgers was very angry and shouted, how dare that bastard kill me, I'll kill him no matter what. His title and woman both belong to me, I'll make her my toy and force her to live entirely dependent on me. Pope Gubat was too stunned as he didn't expect Rutgers would say all that. Gubat was too scared, thinking that because of Rutgers, their holy country is done for. He tried to say something but shut up when Bai Shen glared at him in anger. Angry old Ning looks at Pope Gubat and said, Rutgers has his stigma in the Vatican's divine statue so he can resurrect after death right? Then let's see whether you still can revive him without the statue. Old Ning attacks Rutgers with the fire meteor. Seeing this, the Pope immediately runs away from there and orders all his elders to run away. Rutgers didn't run away and stands still there. He was laughing, saying no one can kill him and he can just revive again. It was like he has lost his mind and could not understand the situation. The fire meteor hits Rutgers directly and he burnt to death. 
Then the meteor starts to fall on the holy church where Vatican's divine statue is that can rev of Rutgers. Seeing this, everyone who was on the ground starts to run away from there. When that giant fire meteor falls on the church, there was a huge explosion, and all the ground around it turns into a wasteland. Pope was too shocked and scared to see his church like that. But he didn't say anything because he cannot do anything to stop it. Before leaving, Bai Shen warns him that if this happens again, he will destroy ancient Rome himself. When both Old Ning and Bai Shen left, the Pope comes down on the ground to help people. All the people and elders were looking at the Pope with hope. Pope Gubat told all of them that they should be happy to be alive. Because with Bai Shen's temper, it is already a mercy that they didn't kill them all. Pope told them to think about what happened to Country H, which Bai Shen single-handedly destroyed. Everyone was cursing Rutgers, saying that if it weren't for him, the Vatican wouldn't be going through such hardships now. The Pope told elders that since the statue has been destroyed, and their Vatican has suffered a great deal of damage, they need to lay low in the future. Living is already a blessing in misfortune. After leaving ancient Rome, both Bai Shen and Old Ning arrive at Shenxi Academy. They directly go to get some tea, and Meng Anwen also joins them. Bai Shen said, Old Ning, since when did you become so good-tempered? Did you pamper your granddaughter too much? Old Ning asks him, Isn't Bai Shen the same? If it were before, he would have burned the entire Vatican down. Bai Shen said, Old Ning, as one gets older, one should accumulate virtue and do less killing. The culprit has already been executed, and there is not much difference between killing and not killing the remaining people. Ming Anwen asks Bai Shen, Didn't you just want to keep them alive so more abyss monsters can be killed? Bai Shen doesn't have anything to say. Meng Anwen takes out the cooldown talisman and throws it at Bai Shen, saying he has charged this up. Bai Shen is surprised that Meng Anwen did it so fast. When Old Ning saw that Meng Anwen helped Bai Shen to charge up the cooldown talisman, he gives Meng Anwen Ning Yiyi's talisman and asks him to help him charge it too. Meng Anwen gets angry, saying they could have just given it to him. Old Ning laughs it off, saying he forgot. Then, a few days later, it was time for the 100th Professional's Great Tournament. Lin receives a notification on his communication device that it's time to sign up for the tournament. Well, this tournament is divided into three sections. Team, Solo, and Challenge Competition. Each grouping consists of 10 levels, and so, the group Lin is in is the level 2029 group. The championship reward is also very generous. In competitions below level 40, the champion of each category can receive a beginner flash skill scroll or a beginner magic potion and 50 million gold coins. When one uses the beginner flash skill scroll, they can obtain 100% of a skill that they have not yet mastered. The champion for the solo competition can receive a beginner magic potion. When one uses the beginner magic potion, all basic attributes will permanently increase by 200 points. Lin is thinking that since the rules and rewards of the challenge competition haven't been announced yet, what good rewards they'll have. Because for them to be so secretive about it, the reward will definitely be good. At this moment, Lin Moyu is level 26, necromancer with the title of Dragon War King. His average strength, physique, and agility is at 980, and his spirit is currently at 5500. As a single piece of equipment, he has Thanatos Scythe, which is level 26. Its spiritual power is at 3000, which is its maximum reach, and it will be unlocked after gathering all sets. Skills of Thanatos. Scythe are death language and summoning souls. Lin's summoning space is 260, and he currently has 250. Summoning space is occupied. 150 are skeleton warriors, and 100 are skeleton mages. Lin's talent is overall blessings with 10 times effect. His passive skill is damage transfer, and his active skills include Level 26, Soul Blaze, Level 26, Summon Skeleton Warriors, Level 3, Corpse Explosion, Level 26, Slow Curse, Level 26, Skeleton Armor, and Level 26, Summon Skeleton Magus. Lin currently has 150, Level 26, Silver Grade, Skeleton Warriors with 7000, Average Strength, Agility, Spirit, and Physique each with the Rage Strike skill. He also has 100 level 26, Silver Grade, Skeleton Mages with 2600, Strength, Physique, and Agility, and their Spirit is 10400. While Lin is standing in front of the registration office, someone calls him. It is Jia Xu, 
who is with Wan Ming and Xu Jin. Xia Xue asks Lin if he is signing up for the tournament too. Lin says yes and asks if they are joining as a team of three. Xia Xu says yeah. She tells Lin that she initially wanted to invite him too. But last time during the opening ceremony, Lin was already level 22, so they aren't in the same grouped level anymore. Wan Ming is happy to see Lin and asks him what level he is now. Lin tells her that he is at level 26. This is too shocking for Xia Su, Wang Ming, and Xu Zhen because currently, all three of them are at level 17. Ixia Xu was shocked that Lin is leveling up so fast. Wang Ming told Lin not to be too hasty. Xu Zhen was surprised because he had never seen Wang Ming give anyone advice before. He asked her if something wasn't right. Wang Ming said, You bunch of scoundrels, because you cannot understand. Xu Zhen didn't have anything to say to her, so he shut up. Suddenly, Yi Yi called Lin from behind. Everyone's attention shifted to the beautiful lady. It was the first time when Lin's first waifu and second waifu met each other. Xia Su was surprised to see how beautiful Yi Yi is. She asked Lin who Yi Yi is. Ning Yi Yi was also surprised to see Lin with Xia Shui. Yi Yi said, I am a friend of Lin, a level 25 shadow assassin. Xia Shu was shocked to hear that Yi Yi is already level 25. It was surprising for her to know that there are others who level up as fast as Lin. Yi Yi, being honest, told Jia Shu that it's all thanks to Lin for helping her level up. When Jia Shu heard that, she got relaxed. She thought, no wonder Yi Yi levels up so quickly. It turns out she is leveling up with Lin. Jia Shu introduced herself as Lin's high school classmate and a level 17 elemental mage. The other two also introduced themselves as a level 17 assassin and a level 17 swordsman. When both Yi Yi and Xia Shu were talking with each other, Xu Zhen said, Seems like being too talented also has its troubles. He was talking about Lin, who now has two waifu candidates. Wang Ming agrees with him. After some small talk, Xia Zhu and the others said goodbye to Lin and left to find their teammates. When all three of them were leaving, Lin told them that if they want to grind in the savage desert, they can contact him. They all left. But Yi Yi was still thinking about them as they are Lin's high school classmates. She was somewhat jealous of them. She told Lin that he and Xia Shu seem to get along well. Lin told her that they are just high school classmates. Hearing that, Yi Yi walked fast to hide her blushing face and said, Lin, you're just too oblivious. She said, if I had such a beautiful female classmate by my side, I would definitely pursue her. Lin, who is slow when it comes to love, didn't understand what Yi Yi meant. While both of them were going to sign up for the competition, a group called them from behind. It was Jiang Tao Tao's group. Currently, Jiang Tao Tao is a level 24 elf knight. Duan Gao is level 21, prophet, and Miao Yu is level 21, healer. All three of them are above, level 20, so they are in the level 20 to 29 group. When Yi Yi saw them, she got happy and asked, Sister Tao, are you also signing up for the competition? Jiang Tao Tao told her that the professional competition that happens once every five years is something they can't miss. Yi Yi asked her if she had found a team. Jiang Tao Tao said not yet. Miao Yu told Yi Yi that they don't really care about rankings. They just want to experience it. Duan Gao told Yi Yi that people keep rejecting them because their levels are not high enough. Hunters don't want to team up with them. When Lin heard that they don't have any team, he immediately asked them why they don't join his team. Lin asked them because that saves him the time of finding teammates. Jiang Tao Tao's group was a little surprised by Lin's offer. Jiang Tao Tao had heard that Lin has been farming the level 39, Savage Emperor dungeon in school. She thought that if they really team up with Lin, winning the championship would probably be almost certain. She agrees to join Lin, but she has one condition. Yi Yi got happy when Jiang Tao Tao agreed and asked her what her condition was. With a serious expression, Jiang Tao Tao said, If we can win the championship, the school will reward us with contribution points. That would be the best reward for us. Miao Yu and Duan Gao agreed with her, saying that they don't want anything else, just the contribution points are enough. Lin agrees with their condition because he knows that if he doesn't agree, they probably won't team up with him. Then all five of them go to sign up. Lin and Yi Yi sign up first, and were about to leave and Jiang Tao Tao and others were standing in line waiting for their turn. On the other hand, Bailey Sheng, 
the grandson of the Bailey Academy, was also going to sign up for the competition. While laughing, Bailey Shang says, I'm determined to win the championship in this professional competition. His underling praises him, saying that with the boss's strength and finding some reliable teammates, the championship will surely be in the boss's hands. His underling pushes back the people in line to make ways for Bailey Sheng, and no one says anything because he is Bailey Sheng, the grandson of the Bailey Academy. No one dares to mess with him. When Bailey Sheng goes in front, he sees Yi Yi, who is with Lin. Bailey is surprised to see her with Lin. He gets angry that why is Lin with Yi Yi? I don't know if you guys are counting or not, but this is the third time when someone is going to fight Lin because of Yi Yi. When Lin and Yi Yi were about to leave, Bailey stands in front and stops them. When Yi Yi sees Bailey Sheng, she gets really angry, thinking that an annoying guy showed up. Bailey acts like he is Yi Yi's boyfriend and asks her why is she with this Lin. But when Bailey sees that Yi Yi and Lin are walking while holding each other's hand, he gets more angry at Lin. Yi Yi gives a disgusted look and says, Who I'm with is none of your business. Hearing that, Bailey couldn't control his anger and shouted, Yi Yi, are you saying it's none of my business? Everyone knows you're my fiancé. When Yai hears that, she lost control. She points at Bailey and shouts, telling him to shut his dog mouth. She says, are you out of your mind? You proposed to me and got rejected. And now you're going around telling people that I'm your fiancé. Our families have a long-standing relationship, so I didn't make a big deal out of it. Do you believe your own lies after saying them so many times? Do you want me to find a better therapist to check your brain? Stop acting crazy here. She warns Bailey that if he dares to talk nonsense again, she will tell her grandfather to deal with him. The first time Lin has seen Yi Yi so angry. Yi Yi was publicly humiliating Bailey and clarifying that there is nothing between her and Bailey. But when she looks at Lin, who is ready to fight for Yi Yi, all her worries vanish. Now she knows that Lin won't care about someone like Bailey and will always support her. When Bailey hears Yi Yi saying all that, he gets more angry. While grinding his teeth, he says, Yi Yi, this isn't over. You are mine, and no one can take you away. Bailey changes his attention to Lin, saying, Lin, this is all your fault. Again and again, you oppose me. Because of you, now even women want to compete with me. As Bailey was getting angrier, his face was getting uglier. He looks at Lin and says, I haven't settled the score with you from last time, but I would not leave you this time. Lin doesn't give a damn about Bailey's background and calls Bailey a jumping clown. When Bailey hears Lin calling him a jumping clown, he gets more angry and his face gets uglier. Bailey says, Lin, you're a dead kid. I will kill you sooner or later. When Bailey says that, Yi Yi, Jiang Tao Tao, Miao Yu, and Duan Gao get in battle formation, Yi Yi tells Bailey that if he wants to die, just say it directly. Lin also gets ready to summon the skeleton warriors to fight Bailey thinking that if they don't kill Bailey, he will probably continue to harass Yi Yi. Suddenly, a loud voice comes from the sky, asking Bailey whom he wants to kill. When Bailey hears that voice, his whole body freezes. Bailey feels tremendous pressure on his body and cannot even speak. A figure appears, whose pressure is enough to change the sky's color. It's Bai Shen, and he is very angry. He asks, you want to kill him? 